I'm on a quest to find music and art. Supporting local talent is the place I start. Yeah, this is our culture, the place to be. Games, books, arts, and crafts and jewelry. This is the guardians of the geekery. 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 And now for today's episode of Guardians of the Geekery with your hosts, Matt, Carol, and Joey. All right, Guardians of the Geekery back with you for special Geekery Market edition. When is the Geekery Market coming at you Saturday, November 9th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's like real life Etsy for geeks right there in your face. It's awesome. Uh, our special charity, of course, is uh, uh, Second Harvest uh, Food Bank. So uh, please uh, check out our uh, our website, our our socials for uh, what and from what uh, goods you can bring. It's not just canned goods; it's uh, some other non perishable stuff. So there's probably a lot of that stuff in your. Um, like us in your pantry, you kind of rotate out every once in a while and you're like, well, so just uh, throwing it away, how about giving it to uh, folks who will eat it? be really, really awesome. Anyway, hey, we're very excited to have, uh, well, Sword One's been with us for quite some time. We've been partnering with them for a long, long time, but we want to introduce everybody to Brittany. Hey, Brittany. Hello. Ah, hey, Brittany. <laughs> hey. So, Brittany, you are now the new head of Swordwin. What is your official title? I'm going to mess it up, so I'll let you say it. Oh, my official yeah. title is just president. Um, yeah. I'm also one yeah. of the instructors. Uh, I teach Bolognese, um, longsword mostly, and group combat. Okay, um, I immediately thought sauce. <laughs> Bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always up for a good pasta. Yeah. I mean, it's Italian, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what it becomes afterwards, right? So, <laughs> did you so, freeze? Did you freeze on us, Brittany? Oh, there she is. She did. There she she unfroze. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 you're you're good. You're good. At I'm first, I thought she was like, swords. I don't like Italian food. I'm, I'm mad. I'm like, I'm out of here. here. <laughs> so so go ahead, tired Carol. Of that yeah. Joke. So I'm sorry, I interrupted somebody saying something with my Bolognese joke. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say, so Brittany, how long have you been with Swordwind? Because I know they've been around for quite a while, but how long have you been with them? Uh, I've been with them for going on three years now. Um, I honestly, I went to my first class and I was hooked, completely hooked. They put a side sword in my hand and I was like, okay, this is it. And I, st I went back that Wednesday and then, oh. I started going um, on Sundays and then before I knew it, I was going to every single class and helping with every single thing. So <laughs> it just kind of made sense to get more involved. And you guys do do a lot of free classes, which, you, you know, um, typically you'll throw them on our meetup on the Charlotte Geeks meetup mm -hmm. too, when it's a, uh, uh, I know you do the theys and gays and you have the mm -hmm. women's uh, women's fighting session. So if you want to go and you want to go with a bunch of people, you know, and sometimes it's kind of like going to the gym, right? You're a little bit intimidated yeah. that maybe you're going to go in there and it's going to be a bunch of, of guys. And especially as a woman, sometimes when you go to geek meetups, it can be a little intimidated because they're like, female in the house oh. <laughs> but, but I know Swordwind has really worked hard at making sure that people can come in for inductory classes and just feel like I am here to learn everybody else is here with me to learn and mm -hmm. and has those free introductory classes so that way you have some confidence before you start attending the sessions and like you said then you get hooked right away right so yeah Absolutely. So like our workshops, every other month we do a girls gaze and nice workshop. Um, and the months that we're not doing those, we do like a regular beginners workshop that's open to everybody. Um, the we've we have worked really hard to get like the numbers of women in our club like up um, and just to be really, really inclusive and mindful of like what we're presenting out there um, and how we treat all of our members. Uh, we have like a very, a very, very good ratio of like men to women. Um, we're probably like 60-ish percent men, about 40 percent women, which is 
fantastic. Probably one of the highest yeah. ratios in like most HEMA clubs across, you know, the whole U.S. And for people not familiar, HEMA stands for? Historical European Martial Arts. Um, I'll get like carried away and just talk about it forever. But um, <laughs> yeah, we do historical sword fighting. Um, so you might you might hear us say like fencing or you might hear me say fencing, but it, I promise it's not like the little tiny epee or foil or saber fencing it's like a bigger sword it's a little bit more substantial i've got one of my i've got my barbie dream messer here so <laughs> like, actually like a big substantial kind of knife there um Good. and we do like a variety of weapons so your typical like long sword side swords which are one-handed swords um pole arms which are you know six foot tall big old guys and uh sickle dagger whole bunch of different stuff yeah and there are different like sword fighting groups in the area and mm -hmm. one of the things that i think is unique about yours is you are trying you are using historically accurate swords there are yes. some that are made for fighting for practice Mm -hmm. But you do learn about the actual swords themselves. There are some other groups that are more nerd fighting where it's nerf, you know, foam rubber, which is fine yeah. too. Um, still and, fun. And, and still fun, but there is an accuracy in there. So if you're really looking yeah. for the skill making and not just, hey, let's hit each other with foam rubber, um, this is it. So, yeah, uh, I even, I grabbed a couple treatises on my way up to my room um so like this is one of the like largest ones that we use this is Marozzo. this is one of our bolognese treatises um we'll use that one for like our weeknight classes um we do have a like a huge emphasis on historicity um for our classes so like everything that we look at comes from one of these sources whether it's like rapier sources um Marozzo, like this one, he talks about long swords, side swords. He talks about pole arms. He talks about shields. He talks about dagger. He talks about everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a basis for everything that we do that's centered in like the 1400s through the 1800s. Wow. Do you have a, a place, a set place where you practice this or do you do this in an open park? Because I'm just curious about passersby. Oh, you yeah, we do have like... a set place now. Um, prior to that, we were uh, operating partially out of a gym and then partially out of a park. But now we have a set place and we've been there for awesome. almost two years. Uh, we're operating out of CrossFit Mountain Island in um, Mountain Island. Um, Cody, he's our he owns the CrossFit. He is a fantastic guy. And we have classes four days a week there. Um, Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's just around that's the corner country. from my house here. So, yeah. heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so for yeah, the go. market, however, you're 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 very into into the history of of the weapons. Before the market, mm -hmm. you are you're you're going to bring some stuff that the kiddos can play with, correct? Yeah. Oh, yes. absolutely. It's, <laughs> yeah. So, um, we did last year, like learn how to fight like a knight where we had those little blow up things that the kids could just like wail on. Um, we <laughs> plan to do something like that again. Uh, we also plan to have the archery back. Um, so adults could use like the larger bow that has like the foam on the end. Um, and then the kids could use the smaller bows that also have foam on the end so that they're not hurting us. But, you know, they get the experience of like, heck yeah, I can shoot an arrow at somebody who is wearing a bunch of padded stuff they're not okay. going to hear <laughs> we appreciate our padded people <laughs> <laughs> just a flesh wound just a flesh yeah. wound. and one of the, my favorite things about it was that you guys were able to involve the parents as they mm -hmm. were leaving the event with the kids all hyped up on the sugar and the fun treats and the activities inside and say hey do you want to work some of that energy out and we did we got those oh, it, yeah. they were uh one side was a dragon the other mm -hmm. side was a, a a knight but it was kind of those weeble wobble bows of the clown punching bags with some yep. sand in it that you could they could take the nerf swords we did provide nerf swords 
that they yeah. could do and um and play with those and i know they enjoyed that as well as your padded person that they could run after so um. <laughs> and for adults this year we kind of plan to do a little bit of like a, a mini beginner workshop sort of thing so maybe get the adults involved a little bit too yeah that's no awesome. and I think that will be great and that's one of the things that I think makes the market a little bit unique is that we are going to have several classes both inside and out that people mm -hmm. can come and hang out so we do have Sherilyn Lambeth who has who was a Guinness book of world record holder and is currently <laughs> working on reclaiming her title uh, for puppetry making and finger puppets and she's going to do a couple demos inside and then we'll have your sword fighting demos both you know, ad hoc as people come up, but also some mm -hmm. set time too, that people mm -hmm. can go up and, and learn how to do that. And then of course we'll have the Lego users group is going to be over there as well as the SCA. I think they're going to leave the fighting to you this time <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to do the crafting inside. Um, but yeah, you're right by the front doors, which is always great. It's always nice to know we have sorted uh, security right <laughs> by the front door. You are well defended. <laughs> we are yeah. a well defended nation. Um, so so uh, that will be a great part of it. And people really chatted about that, about how after the kids played on that for a while, they got back in the car and just zonked for the ride <laughs> home. So if you want a way to make sure your kids are going to sleep well that night after you do the day of the market, have them go by um, Swordwinds. And then Swordwinds right outside the front door. And we do that just because that gives you the ability to run and jump and yell and not worry about breaking anything breakable inside. Yeah. Yep. So, um, we will have cheerleaders there this inside. year, so I do warn you that. So, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Carol? I said, sit down activities inside, jump around activities outside. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and so you said you would learn multiple sword fighting techniques. Which one is your favorite of the ones that you've learned or which ones do you find that, why did you choose the ones that you chose? So I'm really bad at choosing and I just chose all of them. Um, so, <laughs> so you're a well-rounded um, fighter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But honestly, my favorite is probably side sword. It, it was the first one that I started with. It's what is what really drew me in. Like the swords are so pretty. I, I also grabbed one of those. Um, like, I mean, the flower yeah. is like a little, a little extra, but the, like these guys, the hand guards, the ports, the, oh. um, finger rings in here, the knuckle bows, like this little S shape, gosh, they're just so pretty. Um, and I, I'm a sucker for anything pretty. Uh, <laughs> also just like one handed swordsmanship feels way better just for me as a person than um like two-handed and plus you can do like little flourishy things um there are like some wheeling cuts that are called trim zones and they're like a wrist cut and you just kind of like drop your wrists around and it it looks super simple when you just do this but it looks very flashy with a sword in your hand <laughs> absolutely yeah i will tell you um so this college that i went to the first couple of years before I transferred to University of Massachusetts, um, they required all students to take two PE courses, like mm -hmm. two semesters PE. And I said, if I'm going to pay college rates, college tuition rates to take gym classes, I'm taking yeah. unique gym classes. And I took yeah fencing was one of the ones that I took so I actually did the, the little foil and the eppies uh, mm -hmm. of course I'm 5'10 and plus size so some of my teammates felt it wasn't fair because I had twice the reach they did at 5'1 five, 5'2 five, and yeah. um and then I could force my way in but it's really not because it's a skill yeah. you know mm -hmm. if it doesn't matter how tall I am and how long my arm is if I'm slow and yeah. and not quick you could still hit my breastplate and and get your points you know uh now mm -hmm. if if i'm tall and well and we're we're well matched um yes i have the ability to force your epi away and then go in but it's up to you as a smaller tinier person to be able to like counterbalance mm -hmm. 
like there's strengths and weaknesses for both right yep. so um you know so it was kind of fun but I will tell you the the one thing was we used to have to do the chair sits where you lean sit against a wall as if you were in a chair and just sit there and mm -hmm. um, in order to pass the class you had to get up to 45 seconds on the wall and when we first started doing it I literally would feel like I was picking my legs up to walk up the stairs to the gym each time oh. because my legs are so sore. Oh. But by the end of that semester, man, my legs, I could run up the stairs. I could do the Rocky now. So, um, but yeah, but it was definitely fun and uh, very quick. Um, yeah. The, the fights mm -hmm. themselves can be very quick. And if you're not watching, it's you, you lose those points in the, the, you know blink of the eye so um but, do you have yeah. like tournaments yeah we have tournaments um we actually we host one of the largest tournaments in the on the east coast every july it's called queen's gambit oh, yeah. um next year it should be july 11th through 13th i believe don't quote me on that it would just be like somewhere in that general vicinity mm -hmm. um but yeah we host a pole arms tournament a dagger tournament a long sword tournament and a side sword tournament. And to kind of like, <clears throat> to kind of help with a little bit of those problems um, that like Joey, you talked about with like height, because we do have people who are like six, five, six, six fighting people who are like five, one <laughs> that, <laughs> that reach advantage is a little bit. Yeah. E even if you have a lot of technique, it's still hard to overcome. Um, so we split most of our tournaments into height categories to kind of make it a little bit more equitable. Um, so last year we did 510 and up or under 510 um, for our dagger, longsword and side sword tournaments. So it is like a, it's a three day tournament um, and it, it's a really good time. Oh. And spectators are 100 percent allowed. So if you would like to. You can come out and watch. You can come out and volunteer. Yeah. And if you want to be a student, you can come out and fight too. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, you could add that, you know, now that your fire breathing training's done, now you could do the sword fighting. <laughs> well, my, my fire eating is, is well out of, out of practice. And uh, yeah, I need to work on my knees before I pick up a sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, We'll absolutely work with you. We've got several students who have like, who have like prior injuries or like sort of degenerative conditions. Like I, I have one, um, where like sometimes you might not be able to do all of the things, but we work with you to like help and make sure that you can do the things in a way that makes sense for your body versus like, oh, well, you can't do it perfectly. You just don't do that. Yeah. So we, we yeah. try to be as welcoming and, and inclusive to all, all conditions as possible. Yeah. All right, Barbarian, what questions do you have over there? Because we know we'll always talk over you, so. Oh, no. no. Uh, you think there'll be a, a rematch with uh, Jedi Santa? <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> with Jedi Santa, like last year? <laughs> 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 that was the best picture if you haven't noticed i've oh. used it everywhere so. <laughs> oh we've used it a fair amount too <laughs> i mean if jedi santa shows his face again absolutely there's gonna be a rematch <laughs> yeah he's coming back he's coming back we also have sharky uh no not Sharky. We, we have, have a yeah, yeah. Uh, a land mermaid coming from yeah. Sea Life um, Aquarium, so she'll be there too. So we'll make sure that we we uh, equip her with a a Triton or something so that she has <laughs> that. Um, we'll have to get you know, like all the peoples in the picture and do that. But that was so much fun. Uh, you guys were such good sports about that. And we will also have an overhead. Uh, announcing system so you guys don't have to run through and bang your swords like last time uh, <laughs> we had a couple people who were like it was really hard when I was trying to pitch my product because you heard this banging but we'll we've got an announcement so yeah. you know it was our first time last year at yeah. that bigger building so you had actually uh all, guys had come when we were at Queens University as well mm -hmm. which had the outdoor um but as somebody who 
I know you were out front a lot, but describe what you can of what it's like to go to the geekery market from your viewpoint, you know, what, what's kind of different about that or, or how that works for you guys. So. So like the, the first thing that I noticed when I got there was a giant dragon that was sitting. Yeah. Outside, <laughs> which oh was my God. Really cool. We have one that's 12 feet now. So the six foot yeah, one, you, the eight foot one's even, going inside and the 12 foot one's going outside now. So an even bigger dragon. <laughs> yeah. That sounds amazing. And I'm so excited to see it. Um, but no, like you walk in those halls where like all of the vendors were lined up and it's like, it was, it was full last year. There were so many vendors and they had so much cool stuff that like, you just walk up, you're like, oh, I got to remember to come back to that and that and that <laughs> and that. Uh-huh. So it, yes. was, it was really hard not to spend a ton of money on all of the cool things. Yeah. There's been the TikTok trend going around where people are like, how much are you going to spend today? And they're like, $5. And then at the end, they're like, how much did you spend today? $575. <laughs> but we keep telling people if they go and pre-order from some of the vendors, because we've listed mm-hmm. their websites, then they could pick it up the day of the show. And it's, you know, geekery market math is it's free at that point because you already yeah. spent it past you bought it so mm-hmm. present you it's free right yeah um, but then of course that gives you more money to spend there so um so it, it's been kind of fun that way but oh we lost carol the cat so um but yeah <laughs> it's uh it's that was one of the favorite things and we did add more spaces this year just a little bit we wanted mm-hmm. to still keep the 10 foot aisles but we kind of re-switched a little bit of things around. One of the things that we did notice was that people who were on the very outsides, people kind of flowed on the inside and didn't always Mm -hmm. stop on the outside, but they all stopped at the activities. So we're moving the activities to the edges so people can do that. And it allows them to kind of de-stim if they feel like they're overstimulated with all the options in the middle so that they could kind of chill out for a minute. Um, So that allowed us to squeeze in about 12 more spaces oh sweet yeah. <laughs> i yes. also really loved like the um the huge thing of just authors at the back once yes. you got in there that was really really cool so we are splitting them up so every row will have an author so that way if you're a bookaholic you don't go down that one row spend all your money and then not be able <laughs> to shop nothing. anywhere else um but yeah it was we have um I think we have 17 authors or publishers Mm -hmm. that are going to be there and then um we have over 100 sellers this year so last year we had 84 and this year Mm -hmm. we have 100 so we're very excited about that as well as some of the additional stuff and we moved the music tent inside because where the music tent was is going to be and this will be fun for your uh, some of your people as well is a uh, camper trailer that you can walk in and it's got cameras all around in a circle 98 cameras so you can stand mm-hmm. on a round platform and it takes 360 degree pictures of you Ooh. and then turns them into statues so you could go in with your sword and and pose and get your picture taken and they take two sets of shots and then they combine those 192 pictures together to make um, a 3D image of you so that you could be your own little three inch, six inch or nine inch action figure. Now the three inch ones are like, you know, it's like 150 bucks, but it's like yeah. forever, you know? Yeah. And they were telling us, you'll have to go back and watch the previous podcast, but they were telling us about how some people kind of like put their hands like this so that they could be a cigar holder or a pen holder. <laughs> uh, another woman kind of had her arms and legs like this so she could sit on the top of a wine bottle. Another person did like that so that they could be a, a Christmas ornament, you know, where they're yeah. holding their hands. So um, so it was a lot of fun, but I could totally see some of your uh, your team going in there and, and getting their pictures done. So it's about 150 bucks for the three inch one, but it's like mm-hmm. forever. And uh, some people were saying that they're, you know, they also are Dungeon and Dragons players. So they'll make 
make their That's own knight their or rogue little, image of themselves yeah. so that they can play on the game board. So I thought that was really cool. But That's so exactly that will be right. across from you this year instead of the music. The music where they're they're going to be um uh music to shop by as opposed to like yeah. bang out by so that you, they could be inside so you'll hear that. So that'll be fun. But yeah, so you will be the first thing that people see when they come in. So we're very excited about that. We love having you guys there um, and the help that you do and uh, just being there and, and showing. But also, if people are interested in Swordwin, um, they absolutely will post their, you know, um, free classes on mm -hmm. our meetup site. I know Jess, if Jess hasn't transferred the event organizer over to you, just let me know. We could get that over to you so you can set that up. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, and if they wanted to find out more, and this is the thing, it's Swordwind. I kept, because I'm a World of Warcraft person, kept saying Stormwind the first couple <laughs> times you guys were on the podcast. But now I've got it down. So it's Swordwind, mm -hmm. and it's just swordwind.org, correct? Yeah, it is. So. So like the sound that the sword makes when it travels through air like that little whoosh that you hear that's what we're named after that's called the sword wind yeah yeah so, that makes sense that makes sense um any final questions i know carol you kind of went black there for mm -hmm. a minute so yeah I make sorry sure. about that um <clears throat> someone at my door i was not oh. anticipating that so um, <laughs> but no, no come back but yes, uh, no, I'm just really eager to see them again this year. It's always great to to have you at the at the market. So we're all yes. so excited to be there. Yeah, no, it's so much fun, and we love the partnership over the years. So um, definitely check them out, Brittany. Thank you so much for coming and being on here and just talking a little bit about it. Now, for our audio listeners, please make sure to come and check out at least the beginning part of the video once you are stopped driving and in a safe place so you can mm -hmm. see the swords that she was displaying but also you can see some of the swords there's lots of pictures on their website as well of some of yep. your different tournaments and different things like that so so check that out but uh we can't wait it's so close now like after okay. a year of planning it's like oh my gosh it's like five six away so <laughs> 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 but we can't wait to see you there so thank you so much Brittany. yeah thank y'all all right have a good one bye. you too bye that was an episode of guardians of the geekery thank you for listening check us out at guardians of the geekery.com and stay tuned for more content